What's up guys, Austin Brady here. Today we're in Moab, Utah. You can see Mill Creek Falls behind me. Lizzie and I just hiked up here. It's gorgeous, red rocks, the green, it's gonna be amazing. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you behind the scenes of a bridal shoot. Super cute couple, I'm really excited. I'll be walking through my whole process on how I film bridals. And I'll be showing you the final product at the end, so check it out. So now we're here at Dead Horse Point. So typically when I film a first look, I wanna get there at least an hour early, scout the area out, make sure I've got whatever we need. And then I throw up my drone, usually go through one, maybe two batteries, and I get a lot of, you know, pan ups, pan downs. That way we can get kind of some establishing shots, some of the landscape. I mean, they're paying good money for me and for the photographer to be here. And so we wanna make sure they can have the best possible product. Let's just get started and I'll walk you through some of the shots as we go. We've gotten a couple shots so far. Um, we're getting some of the Colorado River as well as Dead Horse Point itself. It's kind of like this huge structure just like in the middle of nowhere. It's really, really pretty. I'm trying to get a little bit of a variety, some of the landscape, some details, getting from up above, also doing some pan ups to the horizon. I'm gonna be using these shots towards the beginning of the video as well as the end and kind of intermix them between as some cutaway shots. I really feel like it just adds some variety. You don't really need to know a ton of different shots, just as long as you can get a drone in the air, you can film a couple really pretty things just before everything happens that way you're prepared and then you have some more stuff in the edit to be able to use So I'm gonna walk you through my process of how I approach a bridal or a first look shoot. What I'll do weeks prior is I'll introduce myself to the photographer. I wanna make sure they're very comfortable with me and that I let them know I'm excited to work with them. Sometimes photographers and videographers can clash. If you introduce yourself and you're able to work with them during the shoot, be very kind, complimentary, then they're gonna be willing to work with you. So typically I'll let him or her do their thing. And then when they're done with their shot, I'll ask them if I have the couple redo that pose, you know, get my own shot real quickly. And they're usually super nice about it. And then during the shoot, it's very just casual, comfortable I want to make the couple feel comfortable I'm gonna have kind of a list of shots I want to get some establishing shots some wider ones some medium shots to be able to see more detail and then obviously the super tight detail shots of the ring of the tie the buttons the cuff links necklaces dress buttons down the back it just depends on the dress or the suit Just be Kate in the groom. You'd be looking like a snack today. <laughs> this is Tobias, our BTS videographer and photographer. Okay, so here's the bride getting set up. So typically I'll let the photographer just pose and then I'll kind of work my way in. I'll usually use a wide and then I'll go in for like a tight and that just gives some variety for the edit. Good, you guys, I want you to just turn in. So can you, your shoulders gonna go into his chest a little? Yes, ma'am. Gotta review some of the photos cause they're freaking cute. Yes. Yeah. And then for those that are curious what settings I use, so I shoot on the Sony a7S III. I've absolutely loved it. It's a full frame camera, so I have as much detail and information as possible. I typically shoot everything in 4K. As for my frame rate, I'm at 60 frames per second because for bridals and weddings, I want to slow it down. ISO is at 640 because that's the native ISO for my camera. Apertures at f-stop 2.8. Then shutter speed is 1 over 125 because I want to double my frame rate, which which is 60 frames per second. Typically we'll shoot in 10-bit color. And then for my white balance, 5600, because it was daylight. Did have to boost that up a little bit later in the evening, but that was where I was at for most of the day. And then for my focus, I typically just have an autofocus with a focus spot so I can touch my screen or move the joystick so I can make sure my subject is always in sharp focus. All right, so now that we finished filming everything we needed to, we're back in my home studio and I'll be walking through a little bit of my process of how I edit, and then I'll be showing you the final video at the end. So typically, I'll drop all my footage on the timeline and then I'll go through and I'll sort and I'll cut out all the bad stuff. So any of the shaky clips, anything that wasn't in focus, I'll run through that quickly. Then I'll go back through and I'll select all of my favorite clips. So as you can see here, I've got all the clips that I had on the timeline. So I got my drone clips. I've also got all of my a7S 3 and then 
Um, this is towards the end of the editing process, but you can see how I pulled up and then highlighted these in yellow, so all my favorite clips. And these are the ones that I feel like were really, really good that we can add into the edit. And then once that that's done, I kind of have a feel for how the edit's gonna go and the footage that I have. Then I'll make sure I select my music. So this clip was from Epidemic Sound. Absolutely love them. Uh, there's a link actually in the description if you wanna get a free month trial with Epidemic. And then I'll take the music, I'll listen to a couple songs, try to figure out, okay, what's kind of the mood, what's the vibe. And then once that's done, I'll usually shorten the music down, figure out, okay, what parts of the song maybe don't have words, what's repetitive, how can I make this the length that I need? Typically for like a bridal, I'll do two to three minutes and then wedding films are more four to five minutes. So shorten that up, drop it in the timeline and then we're good. Then I'll go through and I'll listen through the song and I'll try to figure out, okay, where's the climax of the song? How can we edit to the music? And I'll put some of the most beautiful clips, try to tell a story. So maybe towards the climax, that's when they finally meet in the middle and we get, you know, both the couple together. Maybe it's a slower moving song. It just depends on your music. I'll have those clips make sure I have there and I'll work backwards. So if I'm trying to get to the couple here, I want to make sure I share a little bit of the pre-story. Okay, here's the groom getting ready. I would love that. I typically love to share the bride first because she is obviously the whole point of this video. It's always about the bride, never about the groom. I love having establishing shots at the beginning like we talked about before. So I'll drop a couple establishing shots like where are we? So we've got the establishing shots. We've got the bride. We've got the groom getting ready. Then they meet together. You know, I'll add text in there like the day that this is or kind of share with the audience like what's happening. And then we just go through and it's just the best clips. Sometimes I'll use black and white to kind of mix it up because it makes it more visually interesting. I'll stack clips and then I'll go all the way through and drop every single thing in there until I've edited everything to the music. And then at the end, I'll usually have their name or some kind of sign off. So this is them hugging as towards the end of the evening, it's getting later. And this is one of the last usable clips because after that it just gets really, really dark and we can't use those. And then at the very end, I'll add in my logo. This is who you know made this film. Not only is that helpful for the couple to remember, it's helpful for family and friends that see it and they know who to reach out to if they wanna have theirs done. And it's kind of a subtle way of you know putting your stamp on your work. After the clips are laid, then I'll color grade all the clips. I wanna make sure that they all look really pretty, make sure I didn't miss anything that was off. I'll add grain on top of that. I usually film everything in six 16 by nine. So I'll add a little bit of some black bars on the top and bottom. Sometimes I'll go a little more dramatic, especially when people post these on social media, you don't wanna be cropping in crazy on that aspect ratio, just because you know you can't really see that on a small screen. And then after all that's done, then I can add in my sound design. So I'll usually put, if it's outdoors, I'll put a little bit of wind, maybe some ambient nature noises, walking. And then if there's like any light leaks that I add to, I'll add those types of transitional sounds, some whooshes. Uh, that sort of thing. Depends on how much time you have to edit it or how much the client's paying you. You can add a, maybe a little bit more effort or a little bit less. So yeah, that's my process on how to film an elopement, destination, or bridal film. Here's the final video. Let me know what you guys think.
lady was staring at me, so it made me feel awkward. <laughs> this is what happens when you film in public. But because of the mic, I can whisper. So you guys can hear, but they can't. All right, let's try it again. <laughs>